I travelled to the coolest island in Greece that you've never heard of. Stick around if you want to find out more. So the island I travelled to is called Samothraki or Samothrace and it's located in the northern part of the Aegean Sea, just south of a city called Alexandropoli. So the journey itself to get to Samothraki was not the easiest, considering how close by Greece is geographically it was very, very difficult and quite arduous. We left Edinburgh, got a flight to Krakow, Poland, and then sat there for a while, then got a flight from Poland to Thessaloniki, the second largest city in Greece. Then from Thessaloniki we got a bus to Xanthi, stayed there for a day. From Xanthi we got a bus to Alexandropoli, where we then got a ferry to Samothraki. So quite a lot of travel to get somewhere that is not that far away. And with any journey had during these trying, difficult times, we must always say goodbye to those who we love most. No, not our family, our dogs and our cats. Please forgive me, boy. I'll be back soon, I promise. Oh, I'm sorry. You too, but you're a cat, so you don't really care, do you? Still, see you in a few. When we arrived at Xanthi on the bus, it was pretty late, so we just kind of crawled into bed and slept. We spent a couple of days in Xanthi, which was great. I got to experience a bunch of Greek things, and I had my first run-in with frappe. If you haven't experienced frappe before, approach it with caution. It is the strongest coffee I have ever drunk in my life, and I was more or less running on that instead of diesel for the duration of this holiday. It's it's basically, they take instant coffee and a pile of sugar, they melt it in a tiny bit of water, and then they whip it up to get this really thick, foamy head on it, and then they mix in a bit of ice or milk, and it just, like, the first time I drank it, just blew my head off. It was so strong. On top of that, I had my first Euro. Euros are basically the best thing Greece has ever made. It's effectively a pit of bread stuffed with chicken or pork and chips covered in a pile of awesome sauces and tzatziki, which is basically yogurt with garlic and cucumbers in it. It sounds basic, but it is the best thing I have ever eaten. Euros are not a food item. They're a lifestyle choice. Food was a much bigger part of this trip than I initially intended it to be. The arrival to Samothraki was amazing. Like, seeing the island in the window, it was just so beautiful. It was like something from a cheesy film or from a postcard or something. It was just absolutely beautiful. I stepped off the ferry and the first thing I thought was, my god, this place looks just like a postcard. We stepped out onto this, like, boardwalk by the sea with a row of shops and another road leading off into sort of what looks like rural fields. One of the first things we did on Samothraki was go to Fonyas, which literally translates as the killer. They were going to a waterfall called what? The killer. Called the killer. Yeah. You're taking a philosophic person to a waterfall called the killer. I went there when I was 12. That's why. Yeah. The name is a bit misleading because it's anything but terrifying. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a series of pools up the side of this mountain that are fed into by waterfalls. There's seven in total and everyone goes to these from young children to old people to tourists to everyone. They go up it to varying levels of height because as you go up it gets more difficult but progressively more beautiful. On day one we went to the bottom pool and it's amazing. It's like it's stuff that I didn't think was real until I saw it. It was this crystal clear freshwater pool with all these people just jumping in and out of it to cool off. It was amazing. And the next pool up that we got to was referred to as the granny pool because apparently someone's granny got in the pool and didn't get out again. Uh, I just hope to God that they fished her out at some point. Irregardless, still a really pretty pool. I forgot to mention, on the first day, we got very, very lost. Not gonna say that I'm lost because if I don't admit it, then it's not true. That's how hiking works, right? We bumped into two people that were also travelling around Samothraki, but they were from Greece. And together the four of us found our way to the right section and felt incredibly stupid because on the way back, it was... Yeah, we don't know how we got lost. It was such an easy path to follow. It's bizarre that we even got lost in the first place. On the second day, we returned and we went up past the two pools straight to the third pool where we found this tiny little pool that no one was near. It was 
beautiful. It was this tiny little scooped out pool with a waterfall feeding into it, but no one seemed to know it was there. So we had this tiny pool all to ourselves. Following that, we went up to the fourth pool and I got the fright of my life when it was full of nudists. Yeah, what? <laughs> I have no problem with nudism, it's just I wasn't expecting to crawl to the top of this cliff and be greeted by some guy's arse. <laughs> it kind of caught me off guard a wee bit. But you know, I just kind of got used to it and moved through it and had I tried nudism myself while I was there because you can't really be fully clothed when everyone else is naked, it makes them uncomfortable. But that was, that was a first for me. Swimming naked right now, I uh, can show you her because she's, she's suitably censored. But yeah, no, I think I get why the Greeks do this so much. This is remarkably nice. First time skinny dipping. Not a bad location for it. And I'll only say this, nudism should not be knocked until it is tried. I get it now. Would not do it in Scotland because my balls would probably shrivel up and drop off because it's so much colder here. But in a country like Greece, I get it. Did make it rather hard to get lots of nice footage of the area though. I sort of dipping and diving to avoid all the errant penises and boobs just kind of flying all over the place. On the way back down from Fonyas, we realised we'd missed the bus. So we had to walk in the scorching heat and it was absolutely awful. However, we hitchhiked. And I know what you're thinking, hitchhiking, that's really dangerous because you know you're gonna get abducted and murdered and dumped in a river somewhere. But because this island's so small, hitchhiking is actually very safe. So we managed to hitchhike a good three quarters of the way there. But that final quarter to get back to the um, town we were staying at, Kamariotisa, was absolutely brutal. Say hi to the camera. We're both very tired, very hot, and we've been hitchhiking for like an hour and a half. Yeah. We've got about half an hour left in terms of walking. If we can get a car, then that will shave down to what, like five minutes? Can't complain too much because we did manage to hitch three rides, but kind of wish we could get that, that fourth one that so one we can is. go home. But he is very sunburnt. To be fair, we're going to die of dehydration. Pretty good place to do it. My god, it was brutal. But we got back and then promptly ate about 8 kilograms worth of watermelon before collapsing. The day after that, we went to the Sanctuary of the Great Gods, which was by far, for me personally, the best part of the trip. It was absolutely outstanding. There was these ancient Greek ruins and they were just beautiful. I can't pronounce what it's called in Greek. I'm not gonna try to. <laughs> try again. <laughs> we're going to... The Sanctuary of the Great Gods is famous because it's where the statue of Nike was kept. And if you don't know what that is, you've probably seen it without realising it or at least seen an image of it. It's a very famous Greek statue which is headless with wings because it's been damaged. It was found there, but it's now located in France. Fun fact about that though, Nike is spelt Nike. If you think that's a coincidence, you are completely wrong. Nike is the god of victory. The brand Nike puts their swoosh, right? Their tick on the side of their clothing, on the sides of their shoes, and it's referred to as Nike's wings. The wings of Nike. Nike's wings. You've got the wings of victory on your clothing. We spent the last few days just kind of chilling out, eating food. I got to try a bunch of new foods. Sureki was a really good one, which is a kind of, it's like a festive bread. The one I tried wasn't traditional at all. It was covered and filled with chocolate, so of course it's going to taste good. This thing looks awesome. Do you want to do the honours of chopping this in half for me? Ooh, it's the money shot. It's, that's the shot, it's chocolate. It's my favourite phrase. Oh damn, look at that. So to describe it, it kind of smells like, like a cinnamon roll that's covered in chocolate. I mean, like, obviously smells awesome, so let's, let's go. <laughs> I see why you asked me to eat these. It's good. It's really good. It's just an Easter thing, is it? Usually, but when it's for Easter, they braid it. And usually they put, like, a red egg in the middle. A red egg. Mm, definitely got a leg up on the uh, Easter egg. I also had baklava. If you haven't heard of baklava, it's fine. I just don't have any respect for you as a person. Baklava. You should know what this is. If you don't know what this is, I have no respect for you. This is one of the greatest cakes on the planet. Fight me if you disagree. No, it's the best. The best cake ever. Also, if you've watched any of my other videos, you probably know now that I am acutely thalassophobic. So I thought, why not try and push myself a bit to get over my thalassophobia? And my god, it was beautiful, but damn, it was scary. Last time I did this, I was in Scotland, so the cold water was distracting me from how scared I was. I don't have that excuse here. Uh, well, it's not cold, I guess that's nice quite deep but I swear to god the fact that I'm like walking on rocks it's like walking on 
freaking needles. Oh, this is so much worse. This looking out over the ocean, this is creepy. But being like under the water and looking out, that is so much worse. I'm just, I'm just waiting for Cthulhu to grab me. It's lasted about five seconds in water and it was my chest height. Oh my god. I hate it. It's so bad. And the rocks are so slimy. Now I'm being emasculated. I did better than I think I did. One thing I forgot to talk about was Therma. Therma is another area on the island with some hot springs as well as waterfalls for dipping in. In order to talk about that, I probably have to address that there's a massive kind of hippie element on the island. It attracts that kind of personality. It's going through Therma is the hippiest area you will ever see. I have never seen more dreadlocks than harem pants in my entire life. <laughs> so what are my final takeaways from Greece? Everyone smokes there, so just accept it, don't have a problem with it. Two, nudism should not be knocked until it is tried. And three, frappe and euros are not food items, they are lifestyle choices. <laughs> if you go to Greece and you're not vegan or vegetarian, you're realistically gonna live on those. So just kind of embrace it and accept that you're gonna gain a couple of kilos. I mean I'm eating far too many of these, way more than I can justify eating. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. I also have a TikTok and an Instagram that I will link in the description. Hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.